Hello everyone and welcome to the Hack Sussex Coders Cup 2022 final. I'm Jude, the current president of Hack Sussex. And I'm Tom, the vice president. Just before the final start, we want to say thanks to everyone who came to our socials this year. And thanks to DSS and the Game Development Society for being such great collaborators. I'm not going to be present next year, but our new committee is amazing. And we're looking forward to seeing you at our events next year, including our planned hackathon. Thanks to Kobe for letting us use the Sussex Media Technology Labs to run this event. I also want to thank Electric Square for giving us the opportunity to run this event. Without them, it would not be possible. And to the finalists, good luck. And now time for the Coders Cup. Hello and welcome to the second annual Coders Cup. This year brought to you by Hack Sussex in collaboration with Electric Square. We would also like to thank the Media Technology Lab for letting us use this wonderful studio to bring you these finals live and in style. For those of you who have never been to the labs, I'm Josh. I'm a Sussex student for five years now, teaching for three of those years, and I'm one of the current Hack Sussex committee members. I'm Jack. I'm a first year computer science and AI student, and I'll be joining the Hack Sussex committee next year, focusing on cybersecurity. You could say I'll be putting the hack into Hack Sussex. Are you proud of that joke, Jack? Not really, Josh, but you wrote it. Anyway, for the past six weeks, students from across Sussex have been busy competing in the qualifiers for our Coders Cup, all for a chance of being here today. They've been competing in select Hacker Rank challenges to get enough points to make it to our top eight. Today, those top eight contestants are here to battle it out for the title of Sussex's greatest coder. This is a classic knockout competition, Josh. Contestants will go head to head, trying to solve a programming challenge for each round. The winner will be the first person to solve the challenge. This is a competition all about speed. And skill. Our contestants will need to 100% all of the test cases for a challenge in order to have a winning answer. Unless they run out of time, that is. Our contestants will only have 15 minutes to do the challenge before we end the challenge and move on to a tiebreaker round. Tiebreakers will be easier challenges, but that just means our coders will have to think twice as fast in order to beat out the competition. Each winner will move on to the next round until we reach our grand final and decide our winner. Our winner will walk away with the Coders Cup trophy. But that's not all. They'll walk away with a bunch of prizes. That is right, Jack. At each stage of the competition, there will be prizes for the winner of each round. So as contestants progress through the competition, they'll be adding to their prize pool each time they win. In fact, all eight of our finalists have won prizes just by making it to the finals. Each of our finalists is walking away with one of these official Hack Sussex tote bags. Not only that, each bag contains a Raspberry Pi Pico Mini and breadboard and jumper to go with it, as well as a rubber duck. Delicious. It's not that kind of pie, Josh. It's a micro, it's a microcontroller board that our contestants can use for all sorts of electrical and robotics projects. It can be programmed in C, C++ or Python. Even more delicious. So, we're almost ready to get started, but first we want to tell you about today's sponsor. Yes, this final is sponsored by the lovely people over at Electric Square. Electric Square are a games development studio who make AAA titles from their studio here in Brighton. And their studio in Singapore. And their studio in Leamington Spa. These guys are just a fantastic company who have done great work on titles like Forza Street, Hot Wheels ID and Assassin's Creed VR. They've also got even more in the works with some AAA console titles in development right now and even more about to start. But that's not all. They also create an amazing workplace. Electric Square has a very well-deserved 4.8 out of 5 star rating on Glassdoor for celebrating, supporting and even thriving on difference for the benefit of their employees, their products and the company. And they're proud to be an equal opportunity workplace who are hiring right now. You can check out the opportunities they have available by heading over to their careers site electricsquare.com forward slash come join us. That site again is electricsquare.com slash come join us. That link is also on the screen behind us now and in the chat for those of you watching the stream on Twitch. We're happy to have Electric Square as a sponsor today and we want to thank them for making this event possible. We'll tell you a bit more about them after the first round, so let's get to it. Now, as... Now, as we said before, our contestants are all going home with one of these tote bags filled with prizes and they'll be adding a new prize to their prize pool every time they win a round. The winners of this round will be going home with a brand new smartwatch. This waterproof watch has a heart rate monitor, sleep monitor and GPS built in. 
And once you've connected it to your iPhone or Android, you'll be able to use it to check messages, control your music, and for a whole bunch of other useful things. For game one, round one, the first pair competing to win the smartwatch are Leighton Bushell versus Canon Joshi. Leighton is a first year student studying computer science and artificial intelligence, who is not only ranked number one for the Coders Cup so far, but is also number one in Sussex's varsity code team. Canon is currently in his eighth place in the competition, but as a third year computer science student with eight years of programming experience, this should make for an interesting round. Yes, Jack, I think it will. So let's get to it and have a look at what the opening challenge of the Coders Cup is going to be. Okay, so we're on the combining lists problem this time. Given two lists of the same length, A and B, our contestants will need to construct and return a list with the two lists combined in an alternating fashion. The first item in the return list should be from list A. So for example, if they are given lists 111 and 222, they should return a list that contains 121212. It looks like an interesting one. Yep. That's Good luck to our contestants. And three, two, one, code. code. Okay, so what we're looking at now is a live coding screen. Yep. We've got Leighton in Pi, and Canon is also using Python this round. Yep, Leighton has gone straight in with writing away his code. Canon is, I think, probably still working out the approach he's going to take here. Yeah, sometimes it pays off to have some thinking time in there. You don't want to program twice. It does indeed. You don't want to go undoing half of the work you've done while the other person took those few seconds to think That's and true. is going ahead. He's going for it now. Seem to have a similar approach. Yeah, both of them have a for loop going through the length of one of the input lists and it looks like they're going to be just adding alternating onto there which is exactly what the challenge calls for. Nice. I like to see this quick pace going through the challenges. Me too. It looks like Leighton may be about to hit go on a working solution there. Not even a minute in as yeah. well. This could be over very quickly. Canon's not far off though by the looks of it. I think, okay. we're, I think Leighton has, may have hit go and is waiting to see if it runs and passes the test cases or maybe they're just having a proofread before they go through. Yeah, he hasn't got much time. He doesn't. <laughs> Canon's catching up. He's catching up very fast. And it looks, I love the Canon's name, by the way, on here. It's If Anyone Can. This if Anyone Can, this guy. <laughs> such a fantastic gag there. Uh, Canon's got one. print statements going to his code now. Maybe he's wondering if he can debugging. find a debugging, yeah. So Leighton has fully stopped coding for a while now. Hopefully he's just proofreading and we haven't had some kind, something go horribly wrong for him. Yeah, we don't need a technical problem at this point in the competition. Yeah. So. Both of them have fully stopped typing here. <laughs> I'm starting to worry that something may have gone wrong. I don't think it has. We are only two minutes in of 15 in total. Um, yeah, they've got plenty of time. They do have plenty of time, provided the other one doesn't submit a correct answer that before they finish checking and through. To me, those solutions all look fine. They do. And um, they're the exact same solution. So it's just who can hit go first. Yeah, the only actual differences here by the looks of it is what they've named the array they're appending mm. to and the fact that Canon is printing. Other than that, this is almost character for character identical solutions. It's wild. I think what we're looking for now is just for one of them to hit the console. Oh, and there we go. And Congratulations to Leighton. You've won the round and the smartwatch for winning this round. Leighton will be facing off against uh, whoever wins our next round between Daniel Fultz Harbord and Anton. <laughs> Anton Vasiliev. But before we move on to our next match, we would like to um, we are... speak to Cannon. Yep. See he if he has be... a few words to say. We're hoping to get him on the line fairly soon. That was quite a good round there. I mean Yeah, it was a that was a good one. They both had a perfect solution. Yeah. So let's go through to Cannon now and see how he feels about it. Hello there. Hello there, Cannon. How do you feel that went? Um, not gonna lie, not that bad about it. It was literally a matter of one second. So. Canon, you had a working solution for quite yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah I, just put a, I, I think the indentation was wrong, and I also for some reason decided it would be a good idea to put a print statement. I oddly, see. Oddly enough, except for the name of the array you were using, that print statement was the only difference between you and Leighton's code. <laughs> <laughs> the exact same uh. solution. <laughs> cool. 
So, how are you going to spend the rest of your day? That is a good question. I haven't thought that far ahead yet. <laughs> That's entirely fair. <laughs> Probably eating. I don't know. Is there anything you want to say before we cut you off and head on? Um, firstly, good luck to everyone else. Leighton, you're amazing. Keep up the good work. And also shout out to DSS for being an amazing society and Hack Justice as well. Nice, taking it on the chin and then yeah. throwing in a shameless plug. Goodbye, Cannon. Thank you very much See for taking part. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye. So, moving on to game one, round two, we would like to welcome Anton Vasiliev, a first year computer science student who ranks fourth on our leaderboard for the Coders Cup so far. And we'd also like to welcome Daniel Falks Halberd, who's our next contestant, another first year computer science student ranking five in the Coldest Cup leaderboard, and only one of two contestants using Java this time, which should be interesting. Fourth and fifth, this should make for a fairly well-balanced round, so let's see what the challenge they're doing is. Okay, we've got palindrome checking, nice. Provided a string A, our contestants need to return whether or not that string is a palindrome, a palindrome being a string that is read the same backwards and forwards. For example, hello world would return false, and ABCBA would return true. Okay, good luck contestants. Three, two, one, code. code. Okay, we're back on the coding screen. Yeah, it looks oh. like Daniel's already got a fair chunk of code there while we were just transitioning. Anton, on the other hand, is writing some fairly elegant, oh, nope, deleting that straight mm. off the bat. Okay, as we're typing away. While we wait for them to have something worth talking about, <laughs> just want to remind everyone that if you want to follow us for more events like this in future, you can check out our social medias. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as at Hack Sussex. The handle is at Hack Sussex. No so, spaces. So Anson now appears to be, what is he doing? It looks like he is just checking. Oh. If a minus one, return true, return false. It's annoying that I'm not very good with Python. I'm not exactly sure what colon colon minus one is, if I'm being completely honest. Oh. And, ooh. Wow, what a speedy victory there from Anton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this first round is definitely going through quick. Yeah. And um, I don't think either of us really knew what that syntax was that he was using in Python, so mm. that's probably quite an interesting point. Maybe Anton can shed some light on that for us. Yeah. Uh, our Anton will be facing off against whoever wins, well, who will it could? Anton is going to be facing off with Leighton in the next round. And, well, yeah, that was a very, very quick competition there. If we look at mm. our leaderboard, our next round there, as we just said, is Leighton and Anton. Both and seem to be pretty quick coders, but Anton is faster on the old button. He was very fast. It'll be very yeah. good to see them going up against each other. Next up is game three, round one. Game three of round one. Competing in this round, we have Wong Ho Leong Ru, a first year computer science student and artificial intelligence student who is seventh in the rankings so far. Now, in the opposite corner, currently experimenting with shoelessness, is Guy Aziz, a first year computer science student, second in the rankings. I have to say, I'm a little worried for Ryu here, as unlike most of our contestants, Guy has a full two decades of programming experience under his belt. And to put things into perspective, Josh, that's only one year less than Ryu has been alive. <laughs> it's still anyone's <laughs> game, though. Maybe the new school will be better than the old school. Let's have a look at the challenge they're going to be facing off with. Okay, so we've got a higher or lower challenge. So, given a list of numbers, our contestants need to determine how many times the next number is higher than the last one, and how many times it is lower. Then return the product of those two numbers. Two of the same number does not count towards either total. All right, good luck, guys. And three, two, one, code. code. Okay, here okay. we go. Guy's definitely the favorite to win this round with 20 years of experience. He is indeed. And he's already typing away while I think Ryu oh. is still analyzing the question. Just getting rid of that initial return statement there to create a variable for storing things in. Um, Guy is typing very fast, bigger, yeah. lesser, so I think he's going to be counting up, iterating through and counting up how many times it happens to get those two numbers mm. to multiply together, which is a fairly sensible approach to this. 100%. Yep. 
I think Whereas Ryu, oh, looks like Ryu has a um, similar approach. Yeah. I do think with the speed of the coding here, I think Guy's experience is definitely showing through oh, there. Oh, for sure. Yeah, this yeah. is definitely someone who's been coding for 20 years. Yeah, it's a bit unfair, but Ryu, I'm sure, is a very good sport. <laughs> So, just watching them go through, and yeah, return bigger times lesser. I think Guy is about to hit go. It, we have, do have a red underline on that code. There may be a syntax error, or he may no, be about to take it home. Miss. Yep, syntax error on line eight there. Just throwing in an if statement to fix it. Oh, and we've still got errors in Guy's code. No, I Three. think he's rerunning the code. Oh no, there is another error, you're right. Input. Capitalization is a such chance. an easy thing to screw up. <laughs> and we're a minute and Ryu a half into this. Ryu can do this perfectly, this. then he's got this. Yeah, maybe being so fast at typing away might be the thing that screws Guy up. That's it, because they say programming is all about thinking. Yep, and it's so often that when you do write the quick and dirty solution as fast as you can, that you end up with just a the few little mistakes that take yeah. forever to find. For sure. Yeah. Still getting more syntax there. Oh no, traceback errors now. So the syntax is fixed, but he's the code itself isn't working. And they can't see each other's screen, so I'm sure both of them are thinking that the other is way ahead of them. Yeah, our contestants actually have no idea what's <laughs> happening with the stream. Oh, um, and Guy passes. Oh. And Guy wins the round. That wasn't really very surprising, to be honest, but... It looked like it could have been a close one if Guy just couldn't find those errors. Yeah, if, if Ryu, I think Ryu was not far off beating that there. Because mm. it goes to show, if you he, take the time and think about what you're doing, you, he came very close yeah, to someone who's he had been a coding decent as long solution. as he's It looks almost, well, it was very similar to Guy's solution. He was just, you know, a few lines behind. Yeah. Should we um, get Ryu on the line? Yeah, I believe we've got Ryu on the line now, so we can ask him how he thinks that went. Hey there, Ryu. Hi, 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 Josh. <laughs> how do you feel about how that went? Uh, it's very intensive, I think, because I know that uh, Guy is a very competitive uh, co programmer. So yeah, I'm I'm quite nervous. <laughs> <laughs> we we were actually just saying that beforehand because uh, we you're 21 years old, aren't you? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, and Guy has been programming for 20 years, so. 20 years? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, and your solution was pretty much spot on, and you were only a few lines behind Guy. Yeah, it's impressive just the fact that you were so close to mm. having uh. having him out on that. <laughs> yeah, you know, actually I'm very nervous, so I drink some alcohol before I do the call. <laughs> down. A little bit of Dutch courage. We like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not a yeah. real competition unless you're just a little bit toasted. Uh, <laughs> is there anything you want to say to the rest of our contestants before we finish things um, off here? I would say good luck. <laughs> yeah, and have fun. It's, it's the most important thing to enjoy this competition. And maybe don't drink too much before every <laughs> round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, thank you so thank much, you. Ryu, for taking part. Yeah. yeah. Thank Goodbye. you for coming along. Goodbye. Bye. So next up is the final game of our first round. That's correct. Uh, in competing in this round, we have Brandon Rice, a second year computer science and artificial intelligence student who is currently third place on the Coders Cup leaderboard and once ate an entire lime, including the skin. Very impressive. We also have Thomas Den, a first year computer scientist, also also studying AI. Tom is one to look out for, having only been programmed, programming since September. You never know, we could be seeing a rising star in the making right here with Tom. That's and true. we might need to keep our fruit salads under lock and key with uh, Brandon. <laughs> Let's see what challenge we have for them to close the first round of the finals. Okay, so we're on a sorting challenge this time round. Without using any built-in sorting function or library, our contestants need to sort a list of integers into ascending order. This seems like an easy challenge, but it could easily throw them. You yeah. Know. 
easy to overcomplicate something like this. Oh, 100%. Okay, so let's get to it. Good luck, guys. And three, two, one, code. code. Okay. Already got a lot of code from Thomas. Indeed, we do. He's not messing about. Ah, oh, but this is a Java versus Python match. So yep. with a simple syntax of Python trump. Java. This, this is true because Thomas has straight off the bat here started using array lists to store the array and to work with it, which just using a more complicated structure could make this mm. more difficult for him. Not necessarily more difficult, but just longer to write. If it's a data structure he knows well, then it might actually work better for him. Yep. Brandon here is going through an if and an else if. It looks like Brandon is iterating through and Checking its indexes, ending at the first index. It looks like Brandon might be headed towards something along the lines of a bubble sort. That would be a nice, um, easy to type out solution in the time limit. Hmm. And Thomas seems to be doing the same. Yep. Just one more time if you're just joining us on um, Twitch. We're Twitch. Twitch. <laughs> not Zoom, <laughs> not Discord, <laughs> Twitch. Um, our socials are at Hack Sussex. So yep. go and give us a follow. We've got plenty of events lined up for next year, and you can also find some on our website as well, hacksussex.com. Yep, and that's every major social media platform, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So looking back at the code again, we've got Brandon is further along in writing his code. Thomas, I like the spacing Thomas is doing. I won't be on it. I that's won't a lie. clean solution. It's yeah, <laughs> it's very, very nicely laid out. But which will is his underrated. aesthetics help him in this competition? Probably not. It's, if anything, it's going to take him longer to write things in a like nice, neat way. I'm Brandon's sure he already could, testing. Um, he'll be able to debug a little bit easier than Brandon, maybe. This is true. Brandon's already tried testing once, but he's failed two Ooh. of the three test cases it's going against. So That's interesting. he may be close to a solution here, but not quite on it. Mm. So I think Thomas is still thinking. Yep. Interesting yeah. that Thomas is using a single capital letter as the name of his <laughs> variable there. Yeah, it's definitely not taught. Um, no, not quite the normal convention, although he has, as we said before, only been coding since September. Yeah, I mean, we're going to let Thomas off. Yeah. He's got the least experience out of all of our programmers and he did fairly well in the heats. Yeah. He's for someone who's not been going for very long, he's it's impressive just that he's managed to be here as such oh, an inexperienced programmer. For sure. Yeah. And maybe that freshly learned experience will make things neater and mean that he's more on the ball with doing things the right way. Mm. And I think the trouble is when you're just starting out as well, you want to get those print statements in and you want to be running your code every time you write a couple of lines because you want to see what's yep. going on. Brandon might have the advantage of being able to see this just by reading the code, whereas Thomas might have to think about it. Probably doesn't come as naturally to Yeah. Brandon read. has been coding for eight years. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay, we've got a winner. Brandon won the round. That's a nice, elegant solution from Brandon, yep. I would say. Nice bubble sort. Fast on the old keyboard. Quickly typed, just a few minutes in. And Brandon is going to be facing off in the next finals and going That's home true. with that smartwatch, which should be very, mm. very interesting to see how that goes along next. Be interesting to see if he's fast enough to compete with Guy. Yeah, well, indeed. Uh, we have Brandon, uh, not Brandon, we have Tom on the Tom phone on now the phone. if he wants to talk to us. Hi there, Tom. How are you feeling? Hello. Hey there. Hello. Hey. How do you think it went, Tom? Um, not gonna lie, I struggled. Um, I'm sort of crap with the realists, to be honest. Oh, I mean, I think you were halfway there with a the solution. Um, yeah. We we know that you haven't been programming very long at all, so yeah. To even get this far in the competition is a massive feat. And you're up mm, against someone who's been coding for eight years, so the experience is not on your side here. So don't beat yourself up too much about it. No, of course not. Have you enjoyed your time in the Coders Cup so far? I have. Um, I really like the hacker rank stage of it, just sort of being able to exercise my like 
limited skill to solve crit solutions to problems that have been given. It was it was fun. Nice. Definitely good practice, and yeah. you had a really clean solution. Yeah, we really liked the spacing, very clear. The exact kind of thing that is all too rare in the real world, but you have to go through <laughs> someone else's messy spaghetti code. It's nice to see that yeah, you're um, nice and neat with things. I heard like... you guys mentioned my um, a realist name. It was the it was the name that I was given in the function. Cool. Is there anything you want to say to the rest of the competitors before we have to cut you off? Uh, not really. No. Oh, I have a file on. Nice one. I didn't quite catch that. Well, thanks for ha um, being here today. Yep. Cheers, Tom. Thank you Goodbye. very much for coming along. Goodbye. That concludes our first round for today. And we've had an exciting round indeed. Yeah, we had that ridiculously fast round near the beginning there. Yeah, I think <laughs> Leighton... Leighton and Guy are definitely ones Leighton, to watch Leighton, Guy here. and Anton as well. They were all really fast. Yeah. Um, at submitting. Brandon. Brandon's the underdog in this one. Yep, we've got um, Leighton and Anton are both very good, taking on each other in the next round after the break. And then Guy and Brandon should be a fun watch as well. Yeah. I'm very interested to see how how quick Guy takes on these challenges as they get harder through the yeah, competition. Yeah, exactly. These harder challenges, things are going to get slower. Um, we may even see a tiebreaker round. Yeah. You never know, we could find something that just truly stumps our competitors. Yeah, I mean, if you've never seen the problem before, sometimes it just... It happens. You know, you get that mental block, you really want to Google it, but... Yep. Cool, so before we have a short break for a cup of tea, we just wanted to mention that you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and The Gram with at HackSussex, or head over to our website, HackSussex.com, if you want to see or take part in any more events like this. That address, again, is hacksussex.com. You can find information there on future events, like our upcoming hackathon coming this autumn term. That is right. Our flagship event, the Hack Sussex Hackathon, is coming back by popular demand next term. This is a weekend-long coding event where passionate programmers and designers will take part building the best tech innovations and solutions they can within 24 hours with many prizes for the winning teams. This is a great opportunity to test yourself and build your CV up while having a great time doing it. It certainly is. The Hackathon, like all of our events, is completely free to enter and you can find out more on our website and social media. We're about to have a short break as I desperately need a cup of tea. We'll be back in 15 minutes with our semi-finals. See you soon. Yeah, and so I just had to tell the guy to stop using Marmite to clean his monitor with. Um, anyway, after a thrilling first round, we have now lost half of our contestants. Um, we have... As Cannon and Daniel have both been knocked out in the first half of the competition. And we've got Ryu and Tom in the second half. Yeah, it's all very sad. More importantly, we have Leighton and Anton coming up soon, then Guy and Brandon. They're still here, and we get to see them battle it out in the semi-finals. This should be a couple of interesting um, matches, to be honest. It should. There's some very Anton, fast Anton, Leighton, here. Guy, they were all really quick. Yeah. But I think we're all rooting for Brandon, the underdog in this one. Yeah, I It'd think... It'd be interesting to see how he performs against Guy. It would be great to see. I mean, as, as great as Guy is, it would be fantastic to see an absolute underdog by comparison oh. smash through and win. 100%. Yeah, we could have some tense finals coming up here. And Leighton, Anton, seems like a pretty fair match to me. Yeah, this should be quite interesting. Okay, and before we get to those exciting matches, we do want to tell you a little bit more about our sponsor. Mechanical Circle. Um, it's Electric Square, Josh. That's what I said. Okay, um, Electric Square really are the gold standard in game development expertise. They employ over 200 people. And their dogs. Across three studios and 12 projects and those people get to enjoy a unique studio culture that makes them feel empowered and inspired. So before the next round begins, we'd like to say thanks again to them for making these finals happen and show you a brief look at what their Brighton studio looks like. Enjoy. You know they don't hire their dogs, right? But the, so the dogs...
Okay, okay. I did wonder how they would cope with their little paws. Um, welcome back, guys. Um, the semi-finals of this year's Coders Cup. As we've said before, our winners get to add more and more prizes to their prize bag every time they win a round. And the winners of this round will be getting one of these um, smart colour-changing light bulbs, an Echo Dot to program that with, and also a um, lovely notebook. These things are great. And with the Echo, once you set them up, you can easily adjust your home's lighting with your phone, your voice, or with regular routines, key to go off at a certain time or under certain conditions. The first pair we have competing for the Echo and the Smart Bulb and the Notebook um, in a place for the finals are. Oh. So we have Lan Leighton, who once again is a first year computer science and AI student. Leighton's been using Python for two of the three years he's been programming, so he's got a fair little bit of experience with that. That's cool. And then we have Anton in the other round. Both are first year computer science students, as we've already said. Anton also has some professional gymnastic experience. So will his athleticism give him the edge yeah. in it's this also, round? It's also worth noting that these guys are also first and second place on the Varsity Code team as well. That so is very true, should yeah. should be very fair. Two talented match. programmers. Indeed they are. So let's see what our first semi-final semi challenge is going to be. Okay, this one's called Atbash Cypher. Taking the inverse of each letter in the alphabet, for example, A will be C and so on, given a string, return the inverse of the string using that rule. So, for example, hello world will become S vul de la. I don't know why I tried to say that. Words. <laughs> this should be an interesting one. All right, finalists, good luck. Three, two, one, code. code. Okay. <laughs> I like that Leighton started <laughs> off with wow. Maybe he can't believe that he got here, but it's no surprise to us in the studio looking at the rankings. Yeah. You know, he's number one. He is number one in our rankings so far, but he Anton's not far behind. That's true. Neither should be surprised that they're here in the competition today. Yeah, they're both fantastic coders. Oddly enough, they're both students that have been in labs I've been teaching this year. So I've been <laughs> seeing firsthand how good they are with code. Okay. I think both, both them, are thinking about this. Yeah, it looks like they're both trying to work this out. Personally, I would iterate through this, and me being a weird, I would probably convert the letters to numbers, and then minus a switch it round, return it yeah. back that way. I think the brute force way of doing this would be to have a um, reverse alphabet already in a string so yeah. you can alternate pretty quickly yeah it's just whether or not they're willing to type yeah. out the entire That's alphabet it. twice time is expensive <laughs> in this one it really really is we're a minute in and anton's just started typing out his code opening up with a for loop okay yeah. leighton going for a map oh leighton's going lambda function this is looking pretty oh, elegant it from leighton it does look like leighton <laughs> might be about to try and one line this oh <laughs> it definitely can be done as well yep don't underestimate the power of these lambda functions lambdas are fantastic tools they really can make something very complex into a mm. very brief statement and it's a real um, show of your craft when you kind of mastered those and you've got those anonymous functions down very elegant code. I think as well, this is a, a solution that Anton would not likely come up with as he's only been using Python for four months, mm. whereas Leighton has been using Python for two whole years. That is it. I do see Anton in the labs late at night though, so I, he's, been, he's been grinding his programming game really in has. preparation for this tournament. Yeah, he's a fairly commonly spotted face in the labs these days. That's true. And it's just so nice to see these people code, knowing that they're going to take us through to Varsity Code as well. Yeah, it's really nice to see that this is the kind of talent we're putting out in the world. Exactly, yeah, to. for sure. It looks like Leighton is maybe proofreading or preparing to hit run or something on his code, because he stopped typing for the time being. Anton, on the other hand, still typing away. He's got these two for loops going, uh, one of which has a small syntax error by the look of it. I think he's used normal brackets where he wanted square ones there? Yeah. Or I could be wrong. Oh no, he's um, he's casting I as a character. Ah, so he is. Which it could be smart, because this could be a 
plus 26 wraparound kind of solution. Yeah. Leighton, interestingly enough, has just deleted his solution and started <laughs> over. I think maybe he wasn't confident with how he was writing that. Mm. Seems to be going for something very similar. Yeah, there's definitely a solution where we wrap around and we mod by 26 at yeah. some point. Or finding the difference between the start of the alphabet and the position of your current character. Yeah. And do, doing some kind of mod. For those of you who joined us after the break, it's worth mentioning that you can find more events like this in future by following us on all the usual social medias, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. We're at Hack Sussex on all of them. Mm. And um, next term, we'd love to see some of your faces at our Code Socials, our weekly events. Um, lots of collabs happen at the Code Socials, um, the Game Development Society, DSS. We do some robotics, um, lots of game testing. It's a really fun event. And naturally, we have free snacks and drinks every week as of well. Of course, yeah. Yeah. We wouldn't expect anything less. Yeah. Leighton seems to have decided that he does actually need more than one line of code. <laughs> He's put in a left He's forehand. committed to the lambda though. Yeah. Character N for N in range. So it looks like it looks like maybe the reason he stopped typing for a minute there was to double check where the letters are in the ASCII table. Because I know 65 mm. and 91 are around where the left where the characters are. Yeah. For, and I think uppercase. I think the tough one is there's upper and lowercase letters. So yeah. it's not it's not as simple a situation as um, Wrapping around 26. There's yeah. twice as many characters to take into account. I'm not sure and two, whether we're checking for those or not, but judging by the example we've been given, that mm. did maintain capitalization. So yeah. it could be something that could catch people out towards the end of the competition there. We're getting some funky um, transitions there, but we're back <laughs> to regular scheduled programming over it here. It didn't happen, it's fine. We're a third <laughs> of the way through our time limit right now, five minutes in, and Anton's still furiously going through those two for loops where he is iterating through on length. First iterating through to get his character list of all of the characters. That's what that first loop is doing. And then the second one seems to be doing the replacement for him. And now he's got a return statement. Maybe he's about to test it and see how it goes. His mm, last test got failed. zero of three test cases done. And this must be because of the uppercase. Yep. He's not taken into account that the characters can be uppercase. And Leighton's getting some runtime errors as he's trying to test his code. A moment mm. ago, because he's printing, a moment ago when he ran that, he had objects appearing instead of the desired okay. output, nice. which may be where That's his problem lies. issues. Yeah. It's nice to see these tougher challenges because they can really, um, they really have to think to yep. make a solution. This isn't something that you would ever normally really do in the real world. No, um, there's already libraries for doing exactly yeah, of this course. kind of thing. It's nice to see them think about it for the first time. Yeah. Which it looks like both of them are doing this for the first time. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, commenting everything out from Anton. <laughs> I think he's maybe trying an entirely different approach. Maybe mm. either losing confidence in what he was doing or maybe he's thought of a different solution that may be quicker. Yeah, I don't know if this would be against the rules, but I would certainly um, be printing the input string straight away. <laughs> whilst I'm thinking, I want to see exactly what we that are, string looks like. We are checking that the people don't make their code just to pass the specific cases. <laughs> so I don't think printing yeah. the string and the output would be against the rules. But of course, if they don't suddenly they, put in, well, if for they this submit case, the that. correct answers without any code, yeah, yeah, of course we can disqualify <laughs> them then, but... Okay, so Leighton's still getting some errors on his runtime there. Anton, when he's printing... Ah, uh, he's looking at what comes in the ASCII table uh, at point yeah. 0.97. He's realised that's an A, so add 26 and you've got uh, Z. So he wasn't losing confidence in his code. He commented it out so he could just check which character is at that position so that he knows what he's working with here. He's still got it. zero of three test cases. But both passing. of them seem to be running running their code regularly, which is a good sign. It is a good sign. Don't um, write your whole solution and then try and run, because chances are it's not going to work. Yeah. I like how Leighton here is doing the classic, I don't know why it's not working, so print, 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 print. <laughs> he's, doing, he's printing what looks like the first, the input string itself's, what's that, ord? 
I actually don't know what ord is in Python. This isn't a language I'm familiar um, with particularly. But then he's printing his on? output as well. Okay, line A. No, the order of x minus... Interesting. I yeah, think what he might be doing is printing the ASCII value of that first thing. Mm. Now he's going to he's changing up to print the input string so we can have a look at what's going wrong here. And I can see straight off the bat there, because of the example, that where he's got, he's printed the first one as hello world and then ZJVV. We can see from the example that, well, I mean, it's common sense that Z is not the opposite to H. Mm. Z's actually the opposite to S in this case. Yeah. And looking here, we have Anton also doing lots of array printing. Yeah, this is a long challenge so far. Nine minutes in. Yeah, we've well over half the time now. We've mm. got what, six minutes left six before minutes. we hit a tiebreaker. Yeah, and it looks... I don't think it's likely that we're going to see a tiebreaker this round, to be honest. No, I think they're I both think... circling a solution. Yeah, and they're, not quite they're both on. very close. Yeah. And um, what's nice about this one, I think this is the first time we've actually seen two completely different um, ways of doing it. Yeah, they are. these are very different solutions they're working on. Mm. One of them using the two for loops, and one of them joining lists and mapping and using lambdas. And I, I do think the difference here is a reflection of how long they've been using Python. Leighton's clearly more familiar with things like maps and lambdas, yeah. whereas sure. Anton, having only used it for four months, is less familiar with those particular tools. Mm. And they're lovely features of Python, but they take a lot of practice. and. And not easy things to debug, but it looks like exactly. Leighton's actually just passed all three test cases. Hmm. Congratulations to Leighton who just won that round. Um, you're walking away with a, a notebook, some smart light bulbs, and we've also got the Echo Dot. Yep, and Leighton will be facing off against the winner of our next round. And that was that. I mean, that was the longest round we've had so far, mm. and it was really interesting to watch those two different approaches. Yeah. Um, uh, we do actually have Anton on the call now to talk to us, if we want to go through yeah, to that. Yeah, let's speak to Anton. So, Anton, how are you feeling about that? Uh, hello. Uh, I feel kind of bad because I kind of feel like I was there. They just messed up. Oh, it was a uh, valiant attempt, to be honest. But you uh, you were up against sorry? somebody that's been programming in Python for a really long time. Yeah. Given that um, okay. you've mentioned to us you've only been using Python for four months, it's a bold yeah. move to choose that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. F Python is just faster. It's ca kind of yeah. easier to implement, I think. But yeah, my idea was to like create a list of characters using ASCII. Hmm. Uh, but I messed up with something, I'm not too sure what. I think we discussed that a similar solution as well, using um, a mod to to find out what position it's in and add the correct amount of characters on mm, yeah. to get the correct ASCII code. Yeah. I think that's a good solution and honestly like if it was only like moments away from being yours, we couldn't really yeah. see properly what Leighton was doing because um, he was using, he was using lambdas some lambdas, and... so it's getting quite abstract on Leighton's side. Yeah. yeah. But um, it was a really valiant attempt. Do you um, have anyone that you want to thank? Do you want to? Do you have a message for the um, other coders in the tournament? Yeah. Anything you want to yeah, say? Yeah, I think before we head off? all the coders and yeah, very great coders. You know, they've been very good at the challenges so far, and I wish them luck. But I mean, I'm still going to be participating for the third place, so. Oh yeah. yeah, we're going to see Just you in the yet. third place round. Indeed we will. Yep. So, uh, thank you very much for coming along and competing today. Uh, we'll have to say goodbye to you now. Bye. Okay, thank you very see much. You. Thank you, bye. Yep. Okay. Okay, and coming up in our next round, the second round for the to make their way into the finals, we have Brandon Rice, who has been programming in Python for three of the eight years they've been programming. So these, I think these two contestants are the ones with the most experience, mm. interestingly enough. Yeah, Guy Aziz, um, he's definitely shoeless today because we've seen him, but he's not clueless. <laughs> he knows what he's doing and he knows how to use a keyboard. So this is, should be fierce, especially for Brandon. Yeah, this should be a very 
impressive match, I think, with the experience oh. they've got and how fast they've been competing so far. For so sure. So let's have a look at what the challenge is going to be that they'll be facing each other on. Okay, so common letters. So for this challenge, provided a string A, our contestants need to find the most common letter and return the amount of times it appears in the string. Lowercase and uppercase are seen as different letters in this case. So for example, in the string hello world, the output would be three, because there are three L's in hello world. All right. Good luck, Guy, and good luck, Brandon. Yep, and three, two, one, code. code. Here we go. Brandon immediately started typing there. We actually saw he started typing before the transition even ended. Yeah. <laughs> I think if he wants to beat Guy, that's what he has to do. Yeah. He has to get the solution down quickly. Ooh. Guy is immediately He knows exactly what he wants yeah. to import. <laughs> I think Guy's already worked out exactly how he's doing it. It might just be a case of who types fastest mm. here, because I think they both know what they're, how they're handling this. So. Here we have, so Guy is using a counter for the string. This is because this is from collections. I don't know exactly how counter works. Uh, whereas Brandon is, A is C for C in string. Interesting. So, iterating through. Brandon, interestingly, Brandon's sorting this. I just hope counter isn't a library that does exactly what it looks like it, I think it is it might exactly be. what it is. <laughs> it's a case of just Returning knowing your the libraries. Most common. This isn't really against the rule. No, I this mean, isn't. We didn't say we, they can't use an external library. You want to library. use a built-in library. Yeah, this is it's built in. experience showing through here. It's yeah, clearly, Guy sure. already knew this was something that existed. He found it so quickly. If this does work, Guy might have this in less than a minute and a half. Brandon, on the other hand, clearly doing this the manual way. He's sorted first. I think what it looks like Brandon might be doing is sorting the array so that all the letters are next to each other and probably finding the longest string of the same. Yeah, that would be pretty smart. Oh, yeah. okay. Ooh. Guy just did his first submit. And um, it's he's failed. failed the four test cases. Yeah. So, so clearly maybe it's counter not is not exactly. helping. We'll see. Okay, and now he's going to be printing by the looks of it. Almost put a print after the return there, which of course wouldn't have worked because <laughs> it would have returned. Guy's going to print what that comes out. Brandon here is... Yeah, for letter in A, current letter plus equals letter, and then plus equals. Yeah, he's iterating through and counting the longest continuous nice. string. Nice, we of the can same see letter, exactly what Brandon's doing, and it does look like a classic solution to the problem. Yeah. Sort and count, and sort then you want to submit. Yeah. Oh, interestingly, guys just deleted most of his code and got oh. rid of the import. <laughs> Collections was clearly the wrong move here. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that can be omitted as well for the sake of time. Yeah. Just leave your import in there. But what we can see happening is um, problems with the indenting in Python. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. We've just been told by the guys in the gallery that we they've banned him from using that library because that was That's too easy enough. of a solution. Which is let's just have fair. manual solutions today. Yeah. So guy now doing what looks like a it doesn't seem like here. a problem for him to be honest. Yeah, he's immediately got a for loop iterating through. It looks like he's going through each of the characters and then using the an tree. array where he's, he's indexing into a array here by what the character is and then incrementing those numbers. So he's effectively creating a list, an array of all of the commonalities and then we'll just need to find the maximum. Oh, and Brandon has just run a print here where every time it ran, it came out with zero. So something's gone mm. wrong with Brandon's code there. Yes. Oh, Guy is now throwing a sort in there. And a lander. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can see who our two most um, practiced Python yeah. programmers are, or just programmers in general. I guess they, those two, Leighton and Guy, have um, the most collective experience. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Uh, we've, it's interesting, it's fascinating I mean, in this competition. We've got people who started programming this academic year because they've started the course compared to people who've been programming for two decades. Yeah, and I mean, going <laughs> up against a giant when you're just starting, 
is so good. Watching this back, I'm sure they'll learn a lot about oh, yeah. the way they think and the way people that have been doing this for 20 years think about these problems. Because that's the skill, is thinking algorithmically. Yeah. I also find it interesting whenever they put prints in, because it's interesting to see where they think the problem's likely yeah. to be. Yeah. So, while these guys are typing away, because I don't think we'll have a solution particularly soon, or maybe. Guy might be about to hit run. Nope, Guy has a syntax error on line three there. Okay, he's typing through there, the F FT. Oh, he's defining another function there. See, personally, I would do the, the approach that I think is what Brandon was doing of sort it and yeah. then it's right through. I think this that's is a the. Sort, yeah. find the most time something comes up. Bam. Exactly. Two loops, I think. Uh, yeah, one loop to sort, one loop to. Well, I mean, if you use a sorting function, that bit's longer for you already. But <laughs> two loops for maybe a bubble sort, because that's quickest to write, and then another loop to just count through and find the max. Okay. For anyone that didn't catch it earlier, uh, make sure you check out all of our socials, uh, all our social media, to find out about more events like this as they come up. We are at Hack Sussex on Twitter, Facebook, and the Gram. You can also check out our website, hacksussex.com. Yep. We'll constantly be posting there any updates we have regarding the hackathon, our code socials, any events we'll be putting on next year. And we've got quite a lot in the pipes, so yep. keep an eye out. We've yeah. had quite good code socials this year, actually, with a few special Lovely ones code in socials. there. Yeah. Yep. Really nice collabs. Um, it's been quite good having DSS and Game Dev Society oh, sure. bringing things out, yeah. having the robots around, playtesting some games. Game Even Dev is a real treat, and like you don't have to be a programmer to come and game test. No. You know, you just have to like games, and it's just nice to watch people playing these unreleased games, yeah. seeing people's creativity, and you know, it's where you can talk about collabs. If you've got a game and you need somebody, need a designer, like that's the kind of place where we all connect. Yeah. It's a nice place to be. We've even had one week where we had the students from Brighton University come join us as well. Yeah, that's true. So... Oh! And Guy has won. Wow. What a match. Yeah. That's that pretty intense. Quite a match, yeah. Even with the um, delayed start after um, using a banned library, he yeah, still that, managed to pull it out of the bag. He lost a good few minutes at the beginning there trying to make <laughs> a library work that didn't work and then being told, yeah, you can't actually use that. That's too too good for what we're and working And I still with. believe he only used less than half the time as well. Yeah, but we didn't use nearly all of the time there. Mm. But once again, it was it's a close match. Like, Yeah. The big. experience of these guys definitely showed very yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it, hopefully soon we'll be having uh, Brandon to talk to. Mm. Uh, I will be very interested to see how he feels that went and because yeah. there were a few points he should there be he proud was, of himself. He, he should was, definitely be proud. It was the slow and steady approach, but yeah. So we've got Brandon on the line now. Can you hear me? Hey, uh, Brandon, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm, doing, about that? I'm feeling fine about that. I got three of the four solutions on my final attempt, so I got close, I guess. Yeah, that was a really good attempt. I think you did like a classic um, approach, and yeah. it seemed to be paying off. But yeah. you were. You're up against a giant there, like, your opponent has 20 years experience. <laughs> yeah, you've yeah, got I eight. But... <laughs> yeah, you've got eight, but he's got the over double that. So even though you were very experienced as one of the people in this, it's a very st sturdy difference in time spent between you. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy enough to just be in the top eight, let alone to win round one. So I'm, course, I'm completely yeah. happy with where I came. And of course, we'll be having you back to compete for third place as well soon. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Is there uh, anything you want to say to the other contestants or to the people at home? Um, I'll say good luck to the final two contestants. I think it's a very good matchup and I'm very interested to see who wins. Nice. Cool. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you for having, thank you for thank coming you on. Thank you so and much. Goodbye. See you. See ya. Now, we have one more match in our round two before we move on, don't we, Jack? That's true. So, we've got... Um, Anton and Brandon, and they will be um, competing for third place. Yeah. 
And because our contestants win a prize for every match they win, we have a prize for third place as well. Yeah, we do. Um, third place, we'll be going home with a lovely notebook. Yeah, and that's not all. Is it not? Nope. Third place is also going home with another prize. Well, what's that, Josh? Third place will be going home with this copy of the 1995 film Hackers on DVD, starring Johnny Lee Miller and Angelina Jolie. Okay. Is that any good? No. Right. Um, so competing for the notebook and the DVD are Anton and Brandon. Yeah, let's see what the challenge they're facing is going to be. Okay, valid three by three subsection of Sudoku. So in this challenge, they'll be given a three by three subsection of a larger nine by nine Sudoku puzzle in the form of a two dimensional integer array. They have to validate this three by three table, returning true if it's valid and false otherwise. So for example, if they have 103, 426, 789, that should return true because each thing has only appeared once. That looks good. So good luck guys. Yep, and three, two, one. Code. Code. I think we were actually discussing this one earlier, weren't we? And um, if you have just a three by three Sudoku box, you only have to check that everything appears once. Yeah, you just have to check there's there's no duplication. So that makes us a nice um, round because there is actually a shortcut solution, which is classic of some of these competitive programming questions. Yeah. There's sometimes a solution that doesn't really matter about how you get there, exactly. as long as you know. Just a, you can just do this with a single, single dimensional array of nine items and just mm. count each each frequency of things. Yeah. And as long as none of them are greater than one, you're golden. And Anson here is going for a for loop inside a for loop because of course there is two dimensionality in this. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like Anson is going for exactly what we were just talking about. As is Brandon also doing. Oh well, we no, Brandon's got a for loop and then an if. If the length of the row is not equal to the length of the list set the row. So interesting. Brandon seems to be checking that the rows themselves are the right size. Nice. That is um good practice in general. Yeah. But, um, it's not gonna I'm, help you in the competition. I'm not sure. I, I haven't I'm seen the I'm presuming all the inputs are um, correct by default. Well we are checking for validity, so we don't actually I don't actually know the test cases. It could be that they've oh, the thrown in yeah, yeah. improperly so That's a really one. good point. Brandon saw a bit outside of the box on this one. Yeah. And uh, it would be good to see if there are some test cases like that. Yeah, I imagine with the way that Anton's going, if his solution does fail a test case, it may be that he because he's not checking for this. And if he doesn't work that out, then he may spend some time trying to find bugs his that don't exist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh no, Anton is now accounting for exactly that problem. Mm. <laughs> cool. And they're both seemingly along the same kind of track. I think Brandon is a little further along in the code. Yeah, Brandon got a bit of a head start on it, but I do think that that um, test case is not going to come up. I do believe that it will be three by three um, solutions, so he may have just wasted some valuable time that he could have spent thinking about how he was going to solve this. Yeah, it is a gamble to account for mm. test cases that you can't be sure what's coming up. I've noticed there's a lot in Varsity Code over the year, because quite frequently the things that catch people in that are test cases that aren't immediately obvious. Mm. But of course this being a speed competition. Yeah, the difference between this strict. and Varsity Code is that we can just keep submitting here. Yeah. And so you only have to pass an edge case at a time. Just yeah. Submit, oh, I passed one, okay, that bit's right, let me find the rest of the edges, whereas Varsity Code is one shot. Brandon seems to be testing for diagonals here. I don't think he's clocked that in a single 3x3 three three section of Sudoku, everything can only appear once. You don't need to mm. check whether it comes up multiple times in a row, you just need to check whether it exists multiple <laughs> times in the first place. So I think Brandon may be losing time here by treating this as a full grid mm. when it's not. And I wonder if there is um, an edge case for invalid, an invalid number or potential character. Yeah, we've not considered that there might be, uh, one of these test cases might have 12 as one of the numbers. Yeah, or, or like um, a letter in the alphabet. Yeah, or zero. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the test input has zero, so I'm presuming that zero is fine. Yeah, I think actually comes to think that zero, I imagine, is the empties. 
because they have to be ah, represented in some way. This being an integer, see, and yeah, see. it comes to think of it. So zeros should be fine. Okay, and I think they've both paused for a moment in typing. Mm. It might be that they're both reading through their code and looking for how things are going. Yeah, and I think this is a classic question of the the title and the description of the question is more complicated than the problem. So yeah. it's it's highlighting in your head. This is the problem I need to solve today. This is a and very, very easy one up. to overcomplicate. Yeah. Yeah. One of those it's classically simple things that you, you see can something read into like Sudoku and you think, oh my god, this is going to be a crazy puzzle. That <laughs> <laughs> if it was a nine by nine, maybe, but for the three by three, this should be very simple. Hmm. It would be cruel if the um, the tiebreaker for this round would be a nine by nine. <laughs> <laughs> The tiebreakers are supposed to be easier. Yeah. If that happens, I think something may have gone wrong right yeah. stage. Okay, Anton appears to have a syntax error there. I think he's he's put in e elif, which is else if, I believe, mm. but hasn't put it a is. condition for it. There's the condition going in now. Okay, and Brandon typing in a return there. I think it, it feels like they're both coming close to it close to their solution, they're just not sure exactly how to round their codes off. Mm, okay. And Brandon's just tried to run a glass Error team. on Brandon? Yeah, runtime error. So, da, 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 da. line 21 went wrong there. So, yeah, it, well, that's the run line. So yeah, something in his code fully broke there. And some putting in, in just I is thinking now. to J is equal to, interesting. It's yeah, this is interesting to watch. I, Brandon's still got that code in for checking diagonals. I do, I do worry that if Brandon doesn't yeah. clock, that he doesn't need to check the diagonals. He may lose this just because he's trying to do a nine <laughs> by nine solution for a three by three. And he has a syntax error now on line six. I think he just fixed. Yeah, so this is a tough one. Yep. And I mean, even we're not sure entirely what the um, what the question requires. I think. The real challenge is extracting that information from the question, yeah. making sure you're super clear about what it is that you're about to um, dive into. Yeah, you have to. So it looks like they're looking at a few edge cases, but they're not necessarily the correct edge cases that we're after today. Yeah, personally, I would just try the simplest version and then start adjusting as problems yeah. arise. <laughs> oh, Brandon doing a mass oh. deletion there. Starting again. Ooh. <laughs> I think Brandon maybe clicked that he was doing a nine by nine problem. Okay. Or he's pasted he's it come back. back. <laughs> what is he up to now? I mean, it's never a good idea to mass delete any code. No, always comment. Comment it out. Just yeah. in case. You might decide that you want that later. Okay, Anton's solution passed two out of three test cases so far. So he's I think so Anton's close. probably trying to find out what that one case, what went wrong mm. there. I like to think he's just paused at his computer, like stroking or scratching his chin. <laughs> the, the clock's ticking and yeah. Brandon's still typing. We're coming Anton up on is... halfway through this round as well. Mm. And it looks like we're not going to a tiebreaker today. Anton is... Yeah, he's close to he's it. He's there, yeah. I wonder what you've got wrong. <laughs> okay. I think both both of our contestants here, I think, are reading through their code and trying to work out why it doesn't work for them. Oh, <laughs> uh, Brandon's just replaced a comma with two square brackets there. I think he's clocked that he's working two-dimensionally, or one-dimensionally in a two-dimensional array. Nice. Which should be causing some of the problems. Yeah, he looks like he's fixing that throughout. Yep. He's got a red underline on line 14 of Brandon's there as well. I suspect that... Chain from iterable. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't like that. So, of course, remember the winner for this round is they, walking away with that notebook. And they do this, win the notebook. It's amazing. An amazing 1995 DVD. Hackers starring Johnny Lee Miller and Angelina Jolie. Amazing and, being in quotation marks. Oh, and everything else in the bag, too. Yeah. So they've got the, the Pico, they've got the smart light bulbs, the, the Echo, Echo the rubber dot, ducks. Rubber ducks. And the tote bag. Yeah. yeah. So you get. They get a fair amount. Yeah, and all our finalists today will be getting a t-shirt for the event as well, saying that they got finalists, which, because we're getting them all made in their size, those will be coming in a few weeks' time. 
Yeah, why do we have a rubber duck, Josh? Because of rubber duck debugging. Oh, yeah. Okay. Any time that you have a problem with your code, 90% of the time, the problem is that you need to not be thinking it through just in your head. You need to say it out loud. Any good programmer should have a rubber duck next to their computer so they can sit there looking like a lunatic while they talk to it as if it can talk back. Nice. A yep. debugging companion. Yes. I've got five of them. I wonder if any of our contestants are using a duck to debug today. That would be, I would love to see, it would be amazing if we could have had them on mic as they do this so we could hear them <laughs> discussing things with their duck. And it looks like we may have a winner here. Wow, congratulations to Anton for winning that round. Um, he has won an amazing copy of Hackers, 1995, Angelina Jolie, very special film as well as the notebook and all the other prizes that we've discussed. Yep, and that's both of, for the, both of these contestants, that's the end of the day now because they're not progressing on. So we're going to have a quick talk with the man who didn't quite make oh, it. Oh no, we've got the winner Random. on the line today. Do we? Yeah, so I'm we're losing gonna... my mind. We're talking to An Anton Anton, today. who's coming at third place. <laughs> my bad. Okay, we're just holding out. We're just going to wait for the call to come through in just a moment. Um, that was quite an interesting round, lots of debugging along the way. Yeah, yeah. That, was a, that was a tough one. Yeah, um, I think we've got them on the call now. Hey there, can you hear us? Uh, I can hear you, yes. Cool. How did you find that one? Ah, uh, I, um, I messed up at the start because I've been using NumPy too much with my indexing arrays. <laughs> Uh, and once again, I got all but one solution. Yeah, you, yep. you were doing well. Yeah, you were yeah. doing very well along that. It was interesting to watch because I think both of you were typing out this code and frequently trying to work out, okay, well, what, why isn't it working yet? Oh, do you, um, just out of curiosity, Brandon, do you um, program with a rubber duck? Uh, not at the moment, no. Oh, that was probably the problem. Well, oh man, yeah. <laughs> we need to sort that out for you. Well, in fact, we actually have sorted it out yeah, for you. And you, will you will be, be getting a out. debugging rubber duck to take home. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, Thank you. That should speed up your um, solutions tenfold. Yeah. Do you have anything that you'd like to say to anybody at home or to the other contestants before we let you go? Um, I just said well done to my opponent. Yeah. Take and good very finalists. Great. Cool. Fantastic. Perfect. Thank it was you. really lovely to talk to you. Yeah. Thanks for having Thank us. Bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. So that concludes the semi-finals. And, and Anton has just made their way into third place, which yeah. is very impressive. Yeah. It was really interesting that they used, I think, just over half the time, all in all, to try and work that out. They got a little stumped along the way. Definitely needed some more rubber ducks involved. Yeah. But it was a fairly even match. Yeah. Um, and I think the best programmer won it, but yeah, it not by like. a lot. It'd be interesting to see some of these guys next year trying to um, compete. Yeah. Um, um, so coming up, we have, after a break of coming soon, we've got Leighton and Guy, which I think is the two we've been waiting to see go against each yeah, other in this, the finals. This should be an interesting match because they're one, number one and number two and they're both really highly ranked yeah. on Varsity Code as well, Leighton coming in first. Yeah, and Guy so, having all of that experience behind them. This really is going to be a, a real battle of the titans. Yeah, yeah. this is going to be serious. We know both of them like to use like abstract functions and Lambda, so it should be interesting to see what their code looks like, how yep. clean their solutions are. I'm a little worried that we'll struggle to work out what on earth they're doing. Oh, nice. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go to another break soon. But first, I wanted to tell you more about the 1995, 1995 no. film Josh, Hackers. We're not doing this. So there's this hacker, and he's called Crash Overdrive. Um, guys, and cut. He was cut. banned from using go a to computer break. until he was break. 18 years old cut. because he...
So Crash Overrides, Acid Burn, and the other hackers all decide to team up and take on these guys. Welcome somewhere. back, guys. Um, we are now in the final round of the Coldest Cup to decide who is the very best colder in Sussex. Yes, we are. We've had a brilliant competition here with some very mm. fast, very capable coders, and I think we've definitely got the best two coming up. Yeah, the it's just so nice to see number one position and number two position face off in the final. Yeah. Such a satisfying ending to this competition. Yeah. It's been great watching them in the challenges leading up to this, and it'll be great to see those two, I mean, they are titans at this, taking oh, each other sure, on. Yeah. Yeah. And before we move on to our grand finale, we want to tell you one more time about our sponsor. Manual Triangle. Electric Square. I know what I said. Okay. Electric Square are not just a professional, professional and reliable studio, but they're also fearless and wildly creative developers who champion innovation. They work with some outstanding partners on headline IPs and bring all the benefits of specialised insight and experience, including industry best standards. And remember, they have jobs open now at their website. So if you're looking for a programming job, please hit electricsquare.com forward slash come join us. That link again is electricsquare.com slash come join us, which you can see here on the screen, or you can see it in the chat on Twitch. One more time for any of you that missed it before, we want to show you that short video of their Brighton studio. So please enjoy. So Josh, I feel like the finals are going to be intense. Like camping. You proud of that joke? Yes. Yes, I am. Anyway, to make sure our finalists can't fluke their way to victory, we're going to be doing a best of three challenge for this final round. And as usual, the winner of this round is going to add even more prizes to this already packed tote bag. That is right, Josh. The winner of our grand final will get two signed albums by the band Animo, signed by none other than the band's founding member and faculty legend, Kingsley Sage. Yes, that is the same Kingsley Sage that many of you have been taught by at your time at Sussex. But that's not all. Our winner is also going to be walking away with a £100 Amazon gift card, as well as every other prize that we've seen today. Except the 1995 film Hackers, starring Johnny Lee Miller and Angelina Jolie. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. This is going to be a great final. So before we get into it, we decided to talk to our finalists and see how they're feeling about it. So we've got Leighton coming up. We can do it here. Okay, cool. welcome Leighton and Guy. How are you guys feeling about this? Let's go with Leighton first. Are you feeling confident? I'm feeling extremely nervous. <laughs> um... <laughs> you made it this far. I don't far. know what else to say. Yeah. Yeah, oh. I've made it this far. Um, hopefully, I go home with the, uh, the title. That's definitely on the cards today. Three rounds, and you can take that away. Guy, how are you feeling going into the final? 
She must think that key was safe inside. We didn't quite get there, really guys. Nervous as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think either of you have anything to be nervous about, to be honest. Well, except You're for too... the fact that they're both people to yeah. not feel nervous. <laughs> <laughs> two titans. I mean, it's really impressive that both of you have made it this far. And we're all really looking forward to seeing you code. But before we do, I believe you have a question for Leighton. Yeah, Leighton, you've... Uh, so, apparently, I've heard, the reason you started coding was so you could write scripts for your D and D game you've had running for seven years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have anything to say to each other before we start? Good luck, man, and may the best. Yeah, good win. luck to you too. Of all good the people sports. to end up at the end against, uh, you're the one that's most making me nervous. So, uh... <laughs> same here, same here. let's have a good one. <laughs> Luck. Cool. Well, wish you both luck, which is a little redundant because then it kind of cancels out, doesn't it? <laughs> but um, it's great to have you on the call and thanks for coming along and goodbye. We'll see you in the challenge. Goodbye, guys. Bye. Okay, so this is round three, the first game of our three, potentially three games that they'll be facing off with. Let's have a look at what the first challenge they're doing is going to be. Oh, and we've got a word search challenge. Oh, so given a 2D grid of characters, A, forming a word search, you're given a string B to find in that word search. They need to return whether or not A is included in the word search grid. Words can go in any direction, but not diagonally. And all characters in A and B are going to be uppercase for this. I'm not even sure where I'd go with this one, but good luck, guys. Mm, it's gonna be an interesting one. So, three, two, one, code. code. Yeah. All right. Leighton immediately putting in a for loop there. Looks like Guy is having a little bit of thinking time. Yeah. And as we've seen before, taking the time to think about the code beforehand can save you a lot of time oh, later on. I'm sure on. that will pay off for him. Yeah. And maybe maybe he knows what he would do in a um, real life situation. He knows what library to import, but he needs to think, what's the manual way of doing this? Yeah. And what's the best, fastest manual way of performing this task? Yeah. Interestingly, we uh, in one of the code socials this term, we actually looked at this challenge presented it to the people in the code social, we all discussed how we would approach this. And it's one of those ones where it seems simple at first, but there's a lot of easy little to miss edge yeah, cases. Yeah, you can go left or right, up or down. Yeah. It's, it's tough. And, and keeping within the bounds of the array is one of the tricky bits. That is it, yeah, yeah. Knowing your location in that matrix is gonna help you. Yep. It looks like Leighton has already tried to run his code once, and he's found a I think that was just an error in running. Something when the run sign didn't work, but he's still going through the code, so. Mm. Triple nested for loop. Yeah. I imagine that's going horizontally, going diagonally, sorry, horizontally, vertically, and then when he founds, finds a character, it's rating through that, I expect. Mm. Guy, on the other hand, has two separate for loops that he's working through. Uh, one of them in which he's Straight up returning true if he finds a particular if. I think Guy is searching for the whole word, treating them as strings. Or the individual array okay. in the two-dimensional array. I mean, in the example that we've given, that would work. But yeah. obviously we can go up or down an array. That's where and, the difficulty is going to be. Yeah, left or right. So It's interesting to see that Leighton here is... It's certainly a tough one for them. Yeah. Interesting to see Leighton here is doing a, a try and an exception block here. So hmm. rather than try and avoid the error that's come up, he's putting in a cause to catch when that error happens to stop the, the code from breaking. Yeah, that's nice debugging techniques from Leighton. Yeah. And they're only two and a half minutes in, but they've already got a fair bit of code down. They do, and it looks like the code they've got down is the large part of the work, although maybe not the crucial part of catching it within the bounds of things, it's mm. not exceeding where they can go. I do think it's tough to visualize things when you have, um, when you get to a third nested for loop. Yep. I struggle to get my head around what I'm actually doing at that point. And he's just added a fourth for loop. 
Interesting so, I've noticed they've both been running these at these and while Leighton hasn't passed any of the test cases yet, Guy has managed to pass five of them already. And oh. he's just passed fully. Wow, three minutes <laughs> into the first round. Wow, so, what a first yeah, match. Yeah, that was that was crazy. Less than three minutes before a solution on the first round here. Guy running away with that one completely. Yeah. We have some serious talent this yeah. year. It's, that's this unbelievable. Is, this is such a fun competition to be watching. I'm really <laughs> enjoying this. Um, so coming up next, we've got round three, game two, because of course this is best of two. Mm -hmm. So Leighton needs to win this one just to be to stay even. in the competition. Yeah. So let's have a look at what the second challenge is going to be for them. Okay, we've got largest unique names. So given an array of names, they need to find the length of the two names with the longest combined length. They have no characters in common, that have no characters in common. All provided inputs will have only one correct pair of names. Uppercase and lowercase characters are considered the same thing. So in mm. the examples that we have here on the screen, if given Liam, James, Charlotte, Emma, and I, I can't see the end of that one, I'm gonna guess Helen, because these are names. <laughs> um, the output here should be nine. And in that second example, Christopher, Anna, Zachary, Sarah, and another name we can't see, the output should be 15. Okay, this, this is, is an interesting one. It does look like it's gonna be a tricky one to try mm. and work out. A lot of thinking, I think, before the coding starts from them, they'll need. Yeah. So, okay, I think we should wish them luck. Yep. Yeah. And, and see what happens. Yeah, three, two, one, code. code. Okay, Leighton immediately typing. The, the moment that transition came up there, he was oh, already yeah. deleting the pre-written code and typing in that for loop. So I think There's he's knows already exactly an anonymous the function on Guy's side. I don't know if this looks Ooh. great for Leighton, but he needs to go as quick as he can if he wants to win this. Yeah, I mean, I think that first round has shown Leighton that he he really does not have the time, hmm. the luxury of time to try and work things out. That's he, true. Yeah, and nervousness is not something you want to have when you're programming anyway. Yeah, he did never say, mind under timed conditions in a final. Yeah, he did mention that he's, he's up against the one person that he's most <laughs> nervous about being against, and for good reason. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. But it's nice to see that they have similar styles. Both of them are um, testing their code regularly, which is nice. Yeah. Um, Leighton seems to have dropped the anonymous functions and the um, sugary syntax for a more simple approach, yeah. which is what I would do as well if I was facing off against somebody that's so used to this syntax. Yeah, I think Leighton here, he's got a lot of for, if, for, if, continue, continue. I think Leighton, he's mostly operating on that. what's the cleanest way I can do this. I think he's trying to avoid mm. having to go bug fixing once he runs it. Yeah, that's not what you want. No. Guy on the flip side, two for loops, two ifs now inside them. So it looks like he's gonna have a very condensed solution running here. Yeah, for, ooh, Leighton's typing his return. It's possible, I mean. Are we gonna get our first run from Leighton? Yeah, it'd be good to see how it goes. Oh. Both of them have run and both have got naught out of the two tests passed, so they're close enough to be trying, but they're not yet getting Something the right answers. Something has stumped them this time. Yeah. Oh, and I don't oh believe it. Oh my God. <laughs> Guy in less than two minutes. <laughs> less than two minutes, yeah. Wow. What a competition. <laughs> what an incredible competition. That was that was crazy. I mean, we had single challenges earlier that took longer than those two combined. <laughs> those those are some crazy speeds we sourced from Guy, guy there. Just goes to show that the main thing is practice. Yeah. If you can get that experience, if you practice these kind of questions, then you're ready for any algorithm that's gonna yeah. Gonna throw up there. And I mean, we'll talk to him in a minute. First, I want to see what Leighton thinks of this. I'm hoping he's not beating himself up too much. So I think sure. we have Leighton on call now. He should be really proud. So Leighton, how are you feeling about that? I got thrown to the floor. <laughs> First of all, congratulations. For coming in second is an amazing achievement. Yeah, you're already walking yeah, home with I'm... a lot of fantastic prizes for making it this far. I think if it were closer, I would be kicking myself, but I really was not near the end of those questions. He I think really we saw the nerves creep in there. 
Yeah, I think in the, the element final. of this was you, as you said before, this is the person you were most afraid of going up against. I think we could yeah, see absolutely. that you were nervous about this. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. He just got through those questions so <laughs> quick. I didn't even know he'd finished the first question as quick as he had. Oh, It was unbelievable, honestly, to oh, watch. I'm so happy to have come this far. But yeah, for yeah. sure, you should be really proud of yourself. Yeah. Um, we believe your dad's watching today. Is that true? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. What, what's uh, your hello, dad's name? dad. Um, if you're out there, you smell. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> your son said you smell. I'm sure he didn't mean it. And this is but... being recorded, so that's going to be out there forever. Uh, <laughs> public record now. Leighton's dad smells. <laughs> <laughs> But congratulations, Leighton. You've got a really good goodie bag to take away. Yeah. You've got there, a yeah, debugging really duck, which is going to help you all along your journey at Sussex. Yeah. Um, and hopefully we'll see you next year. Yeah. Anything you yeah, want to say I, uh, for Guy before you go? Yeah, good job. You are really fast. <laughs> <laughs> and congratulations. Cool. Okay. Well, Thank you so much, Leighton. Yeah, very well done. Uh, goodbye. Thank you for having see me. See you. All right, we're well, going to go to Guy in a minute, but... Yeah, I think Leighton, really good sport there. Oh, Leighton yeah. Taking that on the chin, like, I think he knows this wasn't... It's not that he's lacking any kind of ability, mm. he did fantastically. And what's nice about the situation is Leighton and Guy are going into the same year next year, so yeah. they're going to be working together potentially, and it'll be nice to see what they can produce together as two of the best coders in Sussex. Yeah, it should be very interesting. Arguably the two best. And we have a guy on the phone now that we can talk to, see how he's feeling. Hello, hey guy. Guy. Hello, guy, can you hear us? Oh, we're just having a little bit of a technical Ooh. fault, but. Apparently, guy's muted right now. <laughs> we should be hearing from him soon enough, as soon as we can get him off mute. Still, that, what an incredible, I'm still blown away by Same. how quickly that that he, uh, <laughs> he solved these questions. Okay, Guy, can you hear us now? Or can we hear you, you rather? Yeah. Okay, okay, we can't seem to get Guy through right now. So a big congratulations to you. You're going home, of course, with the, uh, the tote bag, with the, the cup, the main thing is that Coda's Cup, oh, yeah. which we all, that's the main prize. But then there's the tote bag filled with goodies, like the rubber duck. The raspberry pie, Pico. Yeah, with the breadboards and wires. The rubber duck. Yep, yeah, smartwatch. Two albums by signed by Kingsley himself. Oh, that's, that. I love that's that That's something prize. to treasure. Yeah, and of course the Echo, the light bulbs. And the £100 Amazon gift card. And that £100 Amazon gift card. But not the 1995 movie Hackers on DVD. I think somehow he'll be grateful for not receiving that <laughs> film. Okay, so yeah, I think this has been great. Uh, it's, it's been such a fun competition. Yeah. We, I mean, from the very beginning, we had some very, very clearly strong people. Mm. It's been great to watch them go through, and uh, they're so strong that I don't think anyone's felt bad about them. Yeah, all eight of them. them I'm looking forward to seeing what all of them produce in the coming few years. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of first years, and I think it'll be interesting to see what they're doing in two years' time at the end of their university life. Yeah, it's going to be great because, as you say, the majority of people in here have only just started at Sussex. Yeah, really, and there's a lot so... of potential winners for next year as well. Yeah. But... I believe we do now have Guy on the call. Okay, so let's if hear want to talk Guy. To Guy. <laughs> yep. And, yeah, hey, hi. Guy. Hey there, Guy. How, hey, everyone. How are you feeling? Uh, Pretty good. Like I'm fine. I'm glad that this is finally over. <laughs> <laughs> this wow! Is just something to get out of the way for you. <laughs> it's that easy. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure, and I don't do well under time pressure. So yeah, I'm just I'm glad I won. I'm also glad that I can now like join the guys for a beer. So. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what an amazing performance throughout. You blew the competition away there in the final. I feel like you were saving a bit of competition for that final, like that last bit of energy was great. So congratulations yeah. for that. It big, made it really exciting to watch. Yeah, those, I mean, those two that you did in the final, one was within three minutes and the other was within two. 
We had single rounds earlier on that took longer than both of those two rounds that you did. Sorry. Yeah, I guess I kind of got into the zone near the end there. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Nice. Well, that... we could see it from our end for sure. <laughs> yeah. The experience that you've got, because I know you've, you've got the most programming experience of the show. I heard, in fact, that apparently you felt bad entering because you knew you had a lot more experience than other people performing. Is yeah, I just true? felt... Yeah, it felt kind of unfair, honestly. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah so I'm sure like in a few years, everyone is going to be like, I'm sure Leighton particularly would be able to like flatten me. But, <laughs> well, yeah. we'll see. We've yeah. got a few years left yeah, for you and Leighton yeah. to battle it out more. Maybe yeah. you've just yeah. found a rival to um, compete with throughout your university life. Yeah. Absolutely. Be... Next year will be interesting. Yeah. So. Are you proud that you can now call yourself officially the best programmer at Sussex? Uh, I guess. That's, that's <laughs> the title that you've got now. <laughs> I'm really excited to have that trophy. Yep. Well, we've got the trophy here. Hack Ooh. Sussex winner. Yep. There you go. And we made, awesome. we made sure, you mentioned you're going to the pub later, and we know that you are nearby. We made sure to get a trophy that if you want to, you can drink from. <laughs> of course, we would love to see you drink your beer your post-show beer out of this cup. Yes. That would be very Consider impressive. it done. <laughs> Consider it done. And we can't wait to watch you lead us to victory in the Varsity Code as well. You and Leighton will be working together in that one. So, I yeah. mean, Absolutely. it I looks love promising like for us. Collaborating with people. Yeah. It should be really fun having yeah. you around the next few years, oh, seeing sure. more of what you come up with. Yeah. For sure. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I look forward to it. Cool. Is there right. anything you want to say to all the other people that you've been competing with today before we head off? Yeah, all of you guys are like super interesting people to me and I would love to meet you all at some point. And uh, if you didn't win this time, just keep in mind like with practice, like with more practice, you're going to be amazing. I'm sure of it. So, yeah. Those are some lovely words from Guy. Thank yeah, you so thank much, you Guy. Much. And right. we'll see you later for a bit. Yeah. Goodbye. It's Bye. been fantastic having you. Okay, so that, that's an interesting competition, but it's yeah. time to start wrapping it up. Yeah, it's been a fantastic event today. It's been really fun and a lot quicker than we anticipated oh. as well. Yeah. yeah. I think um, it's about time that we thank all of our competitors. Yeah. Um, everyone watching at home on, on, not Zoom or Discord. Twitch. You're on Twitch. <laughs> and our fantastic sponsor, Electric Square. Yep. And also a massive thank you to Colby, the Sussex MTL Labs, for allowing us to use this venue. We wouldn't have been able to do the show without him. Yeah, it's been a lot of work putting this event on, but it's been so fun to do it for you all. To those of you who are graduating this year, congratulations and good luck to you out there in the real world. And to the rest of you, we really look forward to seeing you in the new year at some of our events throughout the term. All right. Goodbye, guys. Thank Goodbye. you. Thank you.